plaintiff, Gerald Walraven, and his daughter, Amy, say Amy is in the process of divorcing the defendant. And she claims the last straw was when he went out drinking with one of her friends and spent the night at her house. Gerald is suing his son-in-law for stolen money. Defendant Brian Milliger says he has known the woman in question for 17 years, and he's the one who introduced her to Amy. Brian denies owing Gerald for anything. All rise. This court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Greg Mathis presiding. You may now be seated. Start with you. Now, when Brian and I first met, I uh, noticed he was uh, loud and boisterous. Um, and then he, he uh, would make jokes at the expense of others, uh, including my daughter uh, next to me. You uh, looking at the same guy. <laughs> That's what I do for a living. <laughs> and at home, watch my show. I make jokes at, <laughs> on my own wife at her expense. And she can't say anything back until she gets her television show. <laughs> but go ahead. So he's trying to get him a show. That's all. Go ahead. It, 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 he, he went uh, He went far and out of his way to be the best. Um, but uh, I, the father knows best. There you go. Uh, yeah, if the mother approves of course mm -hmm. um and uh right now my wife and brian are in the uh, process of divorce his daughter and brian why <laughs> so we're um we've been together for 12 years mm -hmm. a lot of the issues centered around financials um one of the last straws kind of in our overall relationship was an instance where he had um, gone out drinking with one of my girlfriends and neither of them had told me about it. Um, and then he didn't come home until eight o'clock in the morning. How did you know he went uh, out with her? They later told you that? They later told me. Tell me <laughs> yes. Came. So he came home at 8 a.m. And then what happened from there? I got the entire story the next morning um, from both of them. But that kind of put the the first crack in the end of the relationship. What was the and story? He had actually the night before told me he was going to a friend's house. And um, I was staying home with the kids, so no harm, no foul. Um, and I, I went to bed as usual. And that is when I woke up the next morning and saw him coming in mm -hmm. at 8 a.m. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe he might have still been intoxicated, mm -hmm. but I had asked what had actually happened. And he told me that, he had uh, gone to the bar with my friend and then uh, went back to her house. And the friend told you what? The friend told me the same, same thing. thing. Well, they, yes. did, they played cards. They had the, said read that the Bible. It was, it was just drinking and um, I guess waiting for an Uber most of the time. Wow. It was a long Uber. <laughs> it was a very right. long Uber. And what's the status of you and your girlfriend? Uh, we are actually co-workers also, so we were never as close. Uh, we actually yeah. didn't talk for about a year and a half, um, and we've, we've just gotten back to... Um, so that was the only indiscretion in that way, but that's a biggie. That's a real biggie. I don't know who, how many people can get past that. You are my friend. You had my husband come over to your house. He lied as to where he was going. And then come to find out, he went and spent the night with you. Is there any other way I can characterize that, sir? Uh, I mean, if you're asking for me to, you know, rebuttal about what she's talking about. She's leaving out some key information. Okay. The simple fact that I've known the girl for 17 years and uh, I introduced them. She was my neighbor. Okay. You know, we, we were going to go out to my friend's house together, her and I, 
and he was not able to go. So the two of us ended up going. She got intoxicated and she couldn't drive her car home. I wasn't as intoxicated as she was. So I drove her car home to her house for her Mm -hmm. and tried to get an Uber home. And being the late hour, there wasn't any Ubers that would come to pick us up. So I eventually had to call an old school taxi service. Mm -hmm. And that gentleman came, you know, an hour and a half later and finally picked me up and brought me home. Okay. You all had come home from after our joint earlier. Yes. Well, we we had gone to her house from 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 the from bar. The after yes. hour joint. No, no, it had yes. to be after hour joint. Bars close at two. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, yeah. We went we went back to her house at two, and then you know we had. And you couldn't get drink. a ride for six hours. <laughs> it, it, no honestly, Uber, I'm no cab, nothing in six hours. Walk. Well, and you wonder why you getting get divorced? Sad. You're not curious about why you getting divorced, are you? Why she would divorce <laughs> you with that story, are you? <laughs> well, but there's I'll, many underlying issues besides that, Your Honor. I'll tell you that. I got that. But you stayed the night with my girlfriend. In my case, you spend the night with my buddy to 8 a.m. after the club. You tell me it's because you can't get a ride in six hours. And we're going straight to the divorce judge. Take an Uber to the divorce judge. I can take an Uber that, to the divorce. <laughs> I'm going to take Uber. We're going to take the Uber to the <laughs> divorce judge. <laughs> <laughs> when you all got married, what were, uh, were you all settled in? Because you said 12 years you had trouble with your finances. So when you got yes. married, what were your, did, were you all stable financially? Um, separately, yes. After we got married, uh, nothing really changed financially. Um, my finances stayed mine, his, his. So everything was always, um, separate uh one example of kind of some of our financial troubles uh was a time that i had uh taken some change from a change jar in the kitchen and he got infuriated and t- uh, called me a thief and actually called my dad and those are the money problems you're talking about, ma'am. We had plenty of money. We were stable. Yeah, that wasn't a problem. It's that piggy bank. Yes. What else other than <laughs> taking money out of the piggy bank did you all argue about regarding finances? Uh, insurance for the children. Okay. I, um, I was always the insurance holder. Oh. And um, I think... In all of the years together, I received a portion of insurance for the kids for one for one year. And um, as far as I'm aware. So you're saying you paid a policy that he didn't pay toward and it hurts your finances more than it would otherwise have if your husband, the father of the children, had given more of his share toward the total cost. That's, yes, sir. Okay, yeah, that was something to argue about. Uh, did you say something to him about that in particular? Because now you're talking All about the, the children. And what would he say? Yes. Uh, well, one one of the reasons he gave me was uh, where we lived was so far away from his work, and he had to pay tolls to get to his work. So... Okay. All right. I don't know um, how to advise. I really don't know how to advise marriage, married couples and others on how to uh, join their money together upon marriage. Uh, but uh, back in the day where, um, where I'm from, the, in Detroit, you come home, the man uh, give his check to his wife. She give him a hundred dollars. He go out drinking or hanging out or playing cards Friday and Saturday, and the rest of the money he get issued his money the rest of the week. Hey, what's your name? Twenty dollars, yeah. twenty dollars, honey. Forget you don't need no twenty dollars. Yeah. That's how my parents are exactly. Yeah, that's what I go through. <laughs> I gotta turn my check over to them. I swear. Yes. I, I tell my wife I gotta pay Stacy for something he didn't do. <laughs> As I write the check to Stacy, <laughs> he get it again. <laughs> I swear I gotta steal my own money. I swear I not get any money. I tell my wife to go get me some money from the bank. Well, you, I went to New York three days. 
I'm doing community work. It's not like I'm going to party. I did three community events observing the community. New York, I'll say it again. <laughs> three days. I went away. The day before I leave, I said, could you stop and give me some money? Because you're not going to leave this. <laughs> I don't have the card where I can just get access to cash. <clears throat> I said, well, would you give me some money? I'm going to New York. Stop by the bank. Or if you're rolling around today, stop by the bank and bring me some money. All right, here you go. Toss the envelope. It's five hundred dollars. <laughs> I'm going to New York. <laughs> That's what I have to go through. Oh, that's great. So you should have sent him through the same thing. Every other man has to go through having <laughs> turned that check over to you, and you issue it out. So you don't go drinking the family money away, gambling the family money away, uh, whatever strip club and the mo family money away, whatever else us men do, bed no sports, whatever the, we do with money irresponsibly. You all are typically the wives and women are typically more responsible in maintaining their ho household finances than men. And I've never had a problem with that quite frankly. 12 years and you all still kept your finances separate. You pay the light bill, you pay for the Kleenex, you pay for the repair of the car, you pay for, you know, and you'll say, okay, I paid for the cigarettes last week, or I paid for the beer. Well, I didn't drink any of the beer, and I didn't smoke any of the cigarettes. If it comes out of one account, nobody can do all that. That's my that's advice. That's exactly. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's exactly how it went. Yeah, okay. That's exactly how it went. Yes. What happened here? <laughs> you call it stolen money. What happened? Uh, Brian Milliger was put on our policy in two, 2017. And in 2017, uh, he, uh, we made a claim uh, for uh, damage on his truck. Uh, a, a check was issued uh, to, to, my, to myself and my wife. And um, the, the repairs were never made. The policy uh, we assumed was uh, the, any unused funds uh, goes back to the policy holder. We assumed that the, um, the check that was issued in 2017 just uh, went back to all state since it was never used. Who was the no. policy holder at that time? Uh, myself and my wife. And who was paying the uh, policy? I was. Okay, he didn't pay the policy? 25% of the time. What? He gave the money to you or directly to the insurance company when he did pay? It, it went through me. He okay. paid me. He'd pay you. All right, and that was sporadic. Can you give me your side? If I may, Your Honor, can I uh, address some of the things that Mrs. Walraven said about yes. the finances between her and I? Yes. Okay, well, first off, you can clearly tell that a lot of it is petty. And if I had signed my checks over to her, we would have been living out of a cardboard box because Amy is the type of person where when you come home from work, there's 20 Amazon packages waiting. For you. <laughs> I only, you're, oh, okay, I only get five waiting on my wife, <laughs> but go ahead. So, so, uh, giving her the money, she constantly had to borrow money from her parents to cover her side of bills. And according, you know, going back to the bills, I gave Amy the insurance money every single month $60. And I signed on with Mr. Walraven's policy back in 2016, not 2017. The check and the date in question is actually 2017 because that's when the hailstorm was. So I needed insurance to drive my new car off the lot because I was in an accident in 2016 and they were willing to put me on their insurance policy and keep me on there. And, and you so were to pay $60. and you were to pay. Yes, you are I paid sixty dollars a month. Okay. I gave Amy the money every month, and then when we separated, I started giving Mister Walraven the money directly. Except in February of last year, twenty twenty, uh, Amy, you know, and a guy got into an argument, and she told me that her parents were kicking me off of the insurance policy. Well, in October of twenty twenty. The insurance company called me and said that Mr. Walraven was wanting to remove me from his policy and that they don't do that without you having insurance to fall back on. 
Well, I said, you know, let me call Mr. Walraven and find out what's going on. And unbeknownst to me, I was still on their insurance uh, from February until October. And I agreed to help Mr. Walraven fix his chimney because it was falling apart uh, in lieu of the money. And, you know, lieu of what money? The monthly payments? Yes. For how the, many for months? The, for, for eight months. Yes. For okay. $480, I helped him fix his chimney, basically. All right. And I was like, and okay, that was you know, for a just small portion of the four years he was on our policy. Yes. The four or five years, um, there was actually a period of time. Let him finish. Go ahead. And so in October, or I believe it was November that I helped them fix the chimney. Mm -hmm. And for them to sit there and say that I did not give them the insurance money, it's a bald face lie. Okay. And ma'am, you want to, you say he never gave any money. He's saying also, he's saying about the um, deduction for the chimney repair as a substitution for the monthly payment from February to October. How do you all respond? Yes, Your Honor. We're, we're definitely not saying that he never paid. Um, we're estimating in the five years he was on the policy, it was 25, about 25 percent. No, very sporadic. Yeah. And the um, the the chimney repair for the eight months that he did not pay was immediately after we had separated. What month was the claim submitted? April of 2017. Yes. April of 17. When is the last time he had made a payment? We honestly couldn't say for sure. Uh, you, he, he, they, we don't have any records or because he always paid in cash statements. Pay you in cash, sir. Or me, or me. Okay. You know, when either. he did, when he did pay, it was in cash. Okay, and you can't remember in April seventeenth, as you say, whether he had paid that month. And in April of twenty seventeen. Yes. If I may, Your Honor. Yes, you may, because, ma'am, that's enough. Let me allow him, because you all couldn't yes. address it. You can obviously tell that they, they have no idea what they're speaking about. In this about. case, in this part. So in April of 2017, there was a really bad hailstorm. And if you refer to page two of the evidence that I provided you, um, it claims that the check should be issued to the vehicle's title owner and to the lien company. And they act, they his insurance company made the check out to him and to his wife and to my title company. Now my title company would not authorize the check because Mr. Walraven is not the signer, nor is he the co-signer to the title of my truck. So the damages were never fixed. I paid my truck off back in 2020 of May. And I asked the insurance company to reissue the check or reissue the payment, I mean, so this way, you know, I could get the damages fixed on my truck and they reissued it and they deposited it directly into my account, unbeknownst to me. Well, on the April 17th, I believe it was of 2021, Mr. Walraven calls me, threatening me, saying I'm committing insurance fraud, that the money is rightfully his and you know, that uh, it, it shouldn't be mine and he's going to call the police and have me arrested. And I paid them the money every single month, regardless of what they're saying. But also, if you look at uh, page five of the um, evidence, you can see that it clearly states that insurance money does not have to be spent to fix your truck. All right. This is the law. I don't need to touch me the law. Uh, <laughs> and then also, hold, hold on one second for me, please. I apologize. I didn't mean to interrupt you, sir. No problem. But if you look at page four, uh, it also clearly states that when it comes time for a payoff uh, through insurance, the money goes to the title holder, not to the policy holder, because it's trying to prevent fraud, which is exactly what the Wall Ravens are trying to do by getting money for something that doesn't belong to them. He suffered the loss. You ought to suffer any loss. Did you have to come out your pocket with anything? The 3,000 you're suing for? Is that something you came out your pocket with? No, Your Honor. If you actually- Well, maybe uh, you think the money is yours and the man, it, it was his car. 
He's said not it, using it, it for his car. He didn't, oh, he didn't, oh, use, okay. he didn't use any of those repair. monies for the actual repair. <laughs> All right. So if he had his buddy repair it and he kept the difference, well, how much would you want? No. Your Honor, also um, a, another issue that we had encountered with this whole ordeal was that the check itself was made out to Gerald and Lisa Wallraven. Um, all, I don't all know. That's why y'all don't want y'all didn't want to give it up. <laughs> the insurance right. policies, uh, Paul, I guess the, every claim payment goes to the policy holders and it's their responsibility to sign the funds over mm -hmm. um, to where to the person who suffered allocated. the loss to the person who suffered the loss him Correct. that was his money your claim is dismissed that was his money i'm glad you got it because you're about to get beat out of three have a good day thank you we spoke the case as we saw it and um it didn't go our way and uh, that's fine uh, I think it was fair, and um, I mean, I bear no ill will towards the Wall Ravens. I mean, you know, greed is uh, is is a terrible thing.